Naima Ladeep, and you are watching the Media Connection. We are live here at 52nd and Lake Park at the BP gas station where a group of gentlemen have gathered to organize and protect those who have been afraid of carjackings. And I need your, your, your voice here. And this, of course, is one of those who have helped to organize this effort. I'm Naima Ladeep. You're live on the Media Connection TV. And we're here at 57th. 52nd, pardon me, at Lake Park at the BP gas station where men have organized to protect those who might be targets of carjacking. Can you give us your name and sure. tell us what motivated you to come out here and do this today? Most of you recognize me. I'm Monty Rollison. Some know me as Rollison from organizations throughout the city. Uh, I'm here because I see and represent that help is on the way. We're going to reclaim our village. We want restoration to uh, be put back in place with our young people. And so we're beginning to launch in various locations uh, experiences like this where we come together, uh, re reunite, re exchange phone numbers, and begin to strategically put things in place that will help us to bring a sense of civility and a village back into our uh, humanity. So we're glad to be here. We continue to come out. Uh, the weather is not going to be a factor for us. Uh, we love our village, we love our women and our children, and we're here to provide a sense of protection. Uh, some people uh, talk about Superman is on the way. I'd say Superman and Superman are here right now. All right. Thank you very much. Well, we thank you so much. Yeah. Now, before you tell us, what do you think uh, caused this rash of, of carjacks? Well, there, there are a number of reasons, beginning with probably the most obvious, the COVID experience has changed and altered the thinking capacity of a number of people. Behind the wearing of these masks, people are using that as an excuse to do some things that they normally wouldn't do. Uh, COVID also has prevented a number of young people from being in school or other activities that we normally would have planned for them. So they're coming up with their own ideas of fun or income or uh, for whatever variety of reasons they have justified what they do. But I, I would say that we have as many reasons and more resources to push back at those justifiable excuses to do things that have been disruptive and inconvenient in our community. So so we're here. And, and, and we've been here. We just got to step up uh, some of our efforts and began to reconnect with each other and make sure that we stay focused. But some of these problems are becoming layered upon each other. And, and we do have the remedies. We have the resources. We're just going to apply as soon as we possibly can. And, and we'll get help along the way, but, but we're here to do what only we can do for our people. Today, I just looked around. I figured we had about 75, maybe in, in, in and about people who've come and gone. Probably somewhere around the average of 75, maybe as many as 100. I came late. People had already uh, met in other locations. T.O. was down the street. And we had some other organizations in other locations. But the idea is it's, it's in the process. And we want our communities all over the city to know we're here, we're helping. And uh, we'll continue to do this. This is right. something that we need to do anyway to, to be connected with each other. And, and we're going to enjoy this process when it's all said and done. We may just appreciate the challenge that was presented to us. Well, I think it's an excellent opportunity for us to show you that we can Absolutely. 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 Much love to you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I want to talk to one of the organizers of this effort. Hey, grab, grab. Yeah. So, I, and, and of course, Nothing happens without a call to action. So I want to bring forth a couple of those who have been calling us to action and have touched the hearts of men and made them respond. So Sister Africa, since you've got a moment. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And as we heard, as many as 75 men gathered to help protect the community as a result of the call that was put forth to stop the rash of carjacks. So we've got Africa, Africa, <laughs> Africa, and Africa Porter and Melanie Brown, who are two of the powerful voices that put the call forth that 
motivated their response of men to step up and protect the women from these carjackings. So tell us, what was it that, that touched you to the point that made you decide we got to do something? Well, I was talking with my girlfriend from Kimberly, Pennsylvania, <laughs> that I grew up with. Um, they made posts about being um, robbed at gunpoint. Oh, no. Uh, three different women, three different locations, three different times. And that was all within like 72 hours. I was oh, like, okay, oh. this is enough. And so Stephen called me, we started talking about it. He said, well, I know what do you want us to do. I said, I just want black men to step up. You know what I mean? That was it. And he was just like, let's do it. And so right. this is really uh, Stephen and Dejuan. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And the other yes. black men that he communicated with. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's important to note that. And it's important to note that oftentimes we complain about our men, what they don't do, what they don't do right. No, they did a lot of things right. They do a lot of things right all the time. And on this call, we have 200 black men show up today. Wow. And um, they came from different organizations, different areas of the city and suburbs. And they came up to stand and to protect and defend us. That means a lot. That means a whole lot. 200 black men. So now, it's hurtful to know that a lot of this, this, the, the crime is being done by young men. What do you think triggers the, the rash of violence and why are they unafraid to prey upon the women? I think that they need something to do. They have nobody guarding, being a guardian over them, watching their every move. And, um, you know, people mention uh, there's no consequences. Mm -hmm. When they get caught, they see their friend right back on the street. He said, that, there was a 15 year old, that was the ninth car right. you know, that we were told. So it's like, there's no repercussions. So when there's more harsher repercussions mm -hmm. for their actions, then people will have a little behavioral change. But if, if there's nothing and they just take them for joy ride, they're gonna keep taking them for joy ride. Mm. And that's when they're so young. If they were older, there will be harsher penalties. Which speaks to, I think, the question becomes, what are we not doing? You know what I mean? Not putting the finger point to blame because people like to do that. We like to look at the parents and the household. As a community, what are we not doing? What should we be doing differently? What can we do more of to provide resources and more love for these young men? At 14, to have that kind of motivation if you want to do something like that. That becomes a community problem. That becomes a problem that we have to deep, a little dig, deeper into to understand what's happening. And to give them what it is that they're lacking. That's, that's on us. So are we not seeing when they're coming up that they're being neglected and maybe even abused before they get to this point where they're ready to pull up a gun and shoot? Absolutely. Obviously, I think there are some, some challenges there. I think we also have to talk about mental health, mm. you know, and how that plays a part in the mindset of someone that can be so vigilant, you know, and doing so. Absolutely. Well, we've got a, a black man here. Looks like one of those who has. I was just standing around watching the interview. You pulling me in. Yeah, well, you know, you're, you're, you're a man, so you're relevant to the cause. And we want to thank you all for being so thank diligent you. and inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Like this. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Oh, well, we love you too. Wow. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for that coffee. Yes. I got you. What a yes. coffee. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. So now who provided the coffee and donuts? Uh -huh. Okay. Well, thank you to Nicole who provided coffee and donuts for those who came out. So now give us your name and tell us what motivated you to be out here among this effort. Uh, my name is Jamai, uh, Jamai Montgomery. Uh, uh, it's a calling. The effort is more of the calling uh, by our sisters, by different people in the community that said, look, we have to uh, get ahead of a problem that's in our community. So it's about accountability for those that want to take accountability because that's taking place with our youth. Uh, I you know they say, according to statistics, the majority of the carjacking is being taken place or being uh, perpetrated by uh, youth between the ages of 15 and 20. And uh, those are children. Those are uh, members of our community that's been misguided, and it's our responsibility to get a hold of them and guide them. So let me ask you: Do you have any any biological children yourself? I have my. I just had my first son. My first child was uh, less than three years ago. Ah. So he's three years old now. <laughs> well, you know, three so, years old, and uh, you know, hey, I'm so, so doing my best that not to let him become uh, a statistic. You know? So as a parent, what do you think is necessary for fathers to do to make sure their sons don't end up like one of those who are predators in our community? Uh, 
So, uh, one, let's not look at our children ever as predators, but as someone that just had a lack of guidance. Ah. To, uh, uh, you know, as five black men, fathers, uh, I'm, you know, you know, take responsibility of whatever was personal or whatever was going on. And always remember that presence and, uh, and the presence is the most important thing in your child's life, particularly a young uh, boy. But how not children? Uh, Being present. Well, it, it seems like, and I don't know where the parents are, like I said, we don't want to point fingers, but something's missing. How do we find out where these youth are connected to, who their parents are, and if their parents need some kind of support from the village? Yeah, well, if I had the answer to that, then we would all win the situation would be handy, too. Uh, you know, we got to keep on struggling and striving to get to know who we're, who we're raising, who we're, you know, uh, never not have an influence in our children's life. We, the parents, ultimately should be the most powerful influence in your child uh, in a child's life. But we have a we have a society that uh, that counters everything we do as parents. So we have to do whatever we can to be that most important influence. But it's a uh, it's a difficult task, and we can't we gotta acknowledge that. You know, uh, everything from our career lives keeps us away from our children more than 12 hours a day. So, you know, that's 12 hours that we don't get to influence. So we might get to influence our children less than three or four hours a day, depending on our commitments to provide it for school. So parents, uh, you know, things like entrepreneurship, creating our own means of income, that way we can create our, we can have more time with our children or something significant. Uh, that's that's many layers of that onion that can be peeled. Yeah, that's find out what's going on. Mm. Well, it sounds like you've got some good suggestions, and we need to put those together so we can help all the parents who may not be able to provide what their children need. We want to thank you so much for being an upstanding black man and a good parent and a good example for what we need out here in Chicago. Right, no thank, thank you so you. much. I'm Naima Latif, live here at the Media Connection. We are at 52nd, 52nd at Lake Park. And where's the next location that people will be? Uh, 53rd and Cornell. 53rd and Cornell. And so now we're going to go live to 53rd and Cornell. And again, this is a citywide effort to make sure that people feel safe as they travel, as they stop to get gas, uh, as they open their cars. And we certainly want to make sure that the young people get the message that we care. So we'll be continuing on the Female Solution radio show. And of course, we want you to join us live, 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak and be heard and join us live on Facebook as we continue this discussion live at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash the dash female dash solution and we want you to come on out if you're a man and be a part of this effort to keep our community safe. I'm Maimuti with the Media Connection. I'll see you next time.